are saying in my country that God gives meat to those without teeth. <laughs> that is ungentleman good evening. During my early twenties, my colleagues attributed that saying to me. The reason is perhaps already clear to you. Why? It's simple. It was this tendency of girls feeling comfortable hanging around me and like the other guys. To them I was a total waste of resources. They would just hang around me and there was no output according to them. <laughs> True indeed until that day I had only expressed my feelings to one girl, though I never told her openly. I just appreciated and let it go. Time passed. I know this ego during of that age group. I couldn't accept this classification any further. It was time for me to prove them wrong. Time for me to go brave, allow my heart to open, and give a chance to love. I always had a way around girls. I never let any of them open my heart. I always feared that feeling of falling in love, that intangible, sweet, but very sour feeling, because I had been above her too many heartbreaks before. I never wanted to feel the same way at any point in time. But like the saying goes in my mother language, Swahili, that a thief will only go and hold for 40 days. I guess my 41st day had come. <laughs> I met this girl, very attractive, but very different from the other girls who used to hang around me. I don't know how it started. All I know it happened and I was in love. Well, if I, if I were to ask any of you here to explain that feeling one has when one is falling so deep in love, I doubt any of you has a comprehensive description of that feeling. That was Omar at that time. Friends, for three sweet years, I was all over the place. Nothing else mattered to me. Nothing else seemed important to me. All I knew was, I was being loved by someone I treasure so much. Someone I attribute a lot of value to. That feeling for three good years. One would ask, where were those friends who thought you had no teeth at the time? Where were they at the peak of your love? Well, they went in hiding, silent, but they were all observing. What it was something very familiar to and you. Something maybe all of them had gone through. Indeed, that day came. It's the same feelings, it's the same portion of feelings, same magnitude but the opposite direction. If you're going to fall in love, you should be ready to have a heartbreak. My heart was shattered into pieces. I didn't know what mattered to me anymore. I didn't know what was relevant to my life anymore. And I saw to myself, and over my grandchild's dead body, never to open my heart again. <laughs> never. I would always keep it locked. And four years passed. Four years of healing and loneliness. And when I reached that point, when I started to grow stronger, but this time more realistic and more pragmatic, with more pragmatic ambitions, this very girl I had only showed interest during the time when my friends thought I had no teeth surfaced. Can you imagine that time? You, you say you never fall in love again, and this only one person turns up again. I look back in time. I crossed that period of pain, heartbreak wounds, and I still could appreciate her. I thought that was good enough. If I could look back in time, and that period of bruises, you know, does not affect my value of her, I think she is the right person. Having failed, having had heart bruises with my mind, fully convinced never to let matters of the heart to the heart alone. 
and having fear of dating for so long and ending up with another heartbreak, I proposed her out for a date. Ladies and gentlemen, those fears made me do something most of you cannot attempt on your first date. I proposed marriage to her on my first date. <laughs> Joking, right? She explained. I said, no, no, no. As a matter of fact, anything, I'm very serious. What do you do? You give up, right? I didn't give up. For three consecutive months, I put maximum pressure in terms of calls, in terms of surprises, in terms of visits. <laughs> and after three months, she says yes. But during those three months, her question was the same. Omar, do you realize you're asking me to make a very big risk of my life? I said, yes, I do realize that. And if it were my sister, I would never let her do this. <laughs> but trust me, take heart, you're risking with the right guy. I'll never disappoint you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is to this beautiful lady that I'm married to today, with a lovely son, expecting another sometime next year in May. <laughs> and what I learned from this is, it's not that I did not have teeth, I just hadn't found the right meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that my 40 days had elapsed, I was only incrementing the days with the wrong people. And indeed, what is meant for you, from it you cannot flee. Back to you, Christmas. There's a hidden message in there.